What a polite and punctual audience we have. That was, that was impressive. So we're going to um, next take on a new section of today's conference. We're going to have two presentations on two innovative models of helping caregivers uh, and providing dementia care. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to have two outstanding uh, faculty members give, give presentations, and then we're going to do a joint uh, question and answer so that you can ask uh, questions about both programs and we can uh, learn from our esteemed guests. So first up, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Kate Posine. Uh, Dr. Posine is a faculty member at UCSF. She's the John Douglas French Foundation Endowed Professor at UCSF in the Memory and Aging Center, our good friends from the North. Um, she, she does a lot. She's uh, an, uh, a highly productive member of their clinical core. I've seen incredible papers from, from her and her colleagues on biomarkers, on clinical progression. But in particular today, she's going to talk to us about UCSF's uh, care ecosystem and navigating uh, uh, program. So, Dr. Posteen, thank you. Thank you, Josh. It's really a pleasure to be here today. What a phenomenal meeting. Great to meet so many um, hardworking caregivers here. And uh, uh, we're happy to be here to share some of our science that we've been doing to hopefully help improve uh, quality of life for caregivers and their families. So, starting off, I'd like to share a story from a person living with early stage Alzheimer's disease. It took nearly four years for us to get a diagnosis. The doctor told us it was Alzheimer's, that there was nothing he could do, and to come back in a year. We were at first devastated, then angry. I also have diabetes. I got medication, education, and care management for that. Now I have a fatal brain disease, and I got diagnosed and adios. We have to do better. And unfortunately, Dementia care is too often crisis-oriented and fragmented. People living with dementia experience frequent emergency department visits and hospitalizations, often that could be prevented. They are often um, receiving inappropriate and potentially harmful medications. When uh, instead of trying to deal with a distressing behavior with uh, environmental intervention, changing something in the home and supporting the caregiver, uh, oftentimes uh, uh, medications are used to try to dampen the behavior with adverse consequences. Aggressive end-of-life care is more common in people living with dementia than without, and often this is not what the person living with dementia would have wanted, but yet seems to be the default in our health systems. Informal caregivers, many of you, I know, shoulder substantial burdens with minimal support from our patient-centric health care models. We need to take care of you as well as the person living with dementia. We know that when caregivers are depressed, the person with dementia uses the emergency department more. In a survey from the Alzheimer's Association, it was reported that caregivers uh, of people with dementia report high emotional and physical stress due to caregiving, with 59% of caregivers reporting high to very high emotional stress and 38% reporting high levels of physical stress. So I'm going to tell you about the CARE ecosystem, which is a collaborative care model. It's a care model that can be delivered by health systems to better support people with dementia and their caregivers. I'm going to tell you about the research we've done on this model and what we're doing to try to make this and similar models, like the UCLA model, the standard of care in this country um, and perhaps um, throughout the world in the future. So, um, and if somebody tells you they have a cure for Alzheimer's disease, it's not true. There is no cure for Alzheimer's disease, although there are exciting disease-modifying therapies that are in trials, and we are very hopeful uh, about uh, uh, drugs coming in the future. But in the meantime, there is care that can help. 
So in this care model, a care team navigator, or a CTN, is paired with um, the person with dementia and the caregiver, so they develop a relationship. So the care team navigator is a dementia care guide. And this dementia care guide, or CTN, has a caseload of about 75 of these families who they look after. Whenever the dyad has a question or concern related to the dementia care, they can reach out to their care team navigator as their primary point of contact. They have a guide, a partner, in the challenge of dementia care. That care team navigator uh, can often address many of these concerns themselves based on their training and the resources at their fingertips. And when it goes beyond the scope of their role, as they are not a licensed medical professional, they can triage to or consult with a member of the dementia specialist team um, who will either provide guidance to the navigator on what to do next or will get directly on the phone with the dyad. So in this way, we can get, uh, give these families access to the dementia specialists, but yet um, really allow the specialists to work at the top of their license. It extends their reach because, frankly, there are not enough dementia specialist healthcare providers. Um, so, and the care team navigator has time to build that trusted relationship with their families. So this is the care model in a nutshell. I'll also mention that the care team navigator doesn't just respond to what the families needs, but also works proactively with those families to address the challenges that we know are coming down the road for families living with dementia. A care team navigator is a friendly, empathic, organized person who loves working with people. A healthcare background is not required. And these care team navigators are trained, supervised, and supported by the expert clinical team. Our care is provided over the telephone, which is uh, nice for families, busy caregivers who might not have time to rush into the office each time they need to talk to somebody, and also is a lower cost way to deliver the care. Our care in the care ecosystem focuses on four primary areas, medications, we carefully review and monitor all medications to make sure they're safe and effective, try to reduce the use of potentially dangerous medications. We support caregivers and provide personalized education. We help families with decision making, planning ahead for important medical, legal, and financial care planning uh, so that they are prepared and don't approach each new challenge in a crisis-oriented way. And lastly, we strategize with the caregiver when there are distressing behaviors to try to find ways to modify the environment or interaction or communication patterns to see if we can find a way for that behavior to be less distressing. And of course, if needed, uh, then we would consider pharmacological approaches. The care ecosystem was rapidly developed in 2014-2015. Um, we got a lot of input from caregivers, from our own clinical staff, including those care team navigators, and from primary care providers to iteratively develop this care model. Then we released the care model for a randomized clinical trial in uh, 2016. We do continue to improve the care model all the time, although the core elements have really remained stable since 2016. We conducted a large randomized clinical trial uh, and this was funded by, uh, me by Medicare. This trial, we enrolled people with dementia and their caregivers throughout California, Nebraska, and Iowa. And we provided care from two hubs, one at UC San Francisco and one at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. And we conducted this trial uh, where we randomized dyads to either receive the care ecosystem Sorry, here's the pointer. Um, to receive the care ecosystem, so, and then some were randomized to be in usual care, like a, a control group, right? So that we could compare outcomes between these two groups. So those that were randomized to get the treatment, and it was a two-to-one randomization, 
they um, had a care team navigator, and these are the care protocols that, were, that they received. Um, we, we really personalized the order and dosage of those depending on the needs of the families. And then we compared outcomes between the two groups. So we did surveys with the families at baseline before randomization, and we did surveys again at six months and 12 months. So we could compare those surveys with the caregivers, how they were doing, how the patient was doing uh, at those time points, and see if there was an effect of the intervention. And we also looked at you know, claims data and data from the electronic health record. Anyhow, uh, we found that the care ecosystem improved caregiver well-being. It reduced their feelings of caregiver burden. It reduced caregiver depression, improved their self-efficacy. It improved the patient's quality of life from the caregiver's perspective. It reduced emergency visit use. And also in press, soon to be published, it reduced potentially inappropriate medication use. So that's a term, potentially inappropriate medications, of a class of medic classes of medications that are shown to be potentially dangerous or not healthy for people, um, for older adults and people with dementia. So we've, we found that this program really does seem to help families and potentially uh, reduce health care costs as well. So how do we get this care model and similar care models out there so that families struggling with these diseases can get the help um, as soon as possible? Well, the, I think there's a, a big gap between science and practice. So I'm trying to move into this space to help bridge this gap. I think scientists too often expect that the implementation and dissemination of their interventions will be taken up by other parties, but this is not the case. And as scientists, we need to understand the barriers to dissemination of effective dementia care and trial implementation methods to bridge these gaps. In other words, I need to figure out how to get the care ecosystem out to all the families in this country. There were two major uh, big reviews of all the dementia care work that recently happened. These were commissioned by the National Institute of Health. They were both published in the last couple of years. One was by um, AHRQ and one was by the National Academy of Science. And these scoping reviews, you know, each about 100 pages long, they reviewed all the evidence. And they found that evidence is sufficient to justify implementation of collaborative care models, and, uh, such as the care ecosystem and the UCLA program you're about to hear about, in a broad spectrum of community settings with evaluation conducted to continue expanding the evidence base. So this is the most effective type of dementia care. And there is, I think, the opportunity to scale it out because it's also, these care models are um, designed to be feasible in, uh, in health systems. So, uh, so again, I'm trying to figure out how to get these care models out there. We have a website. Uh, it's our sort of one-stop shop for health systems who want to learn about the care ecosystem and see if they are ready to adopt this type of program. And this is the website here. You're welcome to check it out and send it to your, um, your doctor and <laughs> see if they will champion it. Anyway, at this website, um, it, we, have, we have toolkit for the health system. We have all of our care protocols, all the care materials you can access for free that our care team navigators use. There's a whole online video training program. So when health systems adopt the program and they hire care team navigators, they, the care team navigators go through this video-based training program, complete quizzes to get certified to be a navigator. So we keep iterating on this, trying to do better and better, but our goal is we have a one-stop shop for health systems to adopt the program, and we also offer free consultations to any health system who's thinking about doing this. Our, our current research, because of course I'm also continuing the science as well, we have a new grant funded by the National Institute of Aging, and we're looking at how the care ecosystem has been implemented and whether it's effective in the hands of six diverse health systems around the country. One is local, the Department of Health Services of, of LA County will be um, launching enrollment for this next month. So, and UCSF, we're a site, and you can see where the other sites are as well. So, really exciting to be 
moving forward one step closer to better dementia care for all. So my vision for the near future of dementia care is that when a patient or family member or a provider has a concern for a change in cognition or behavior, something's not right, that that patient will be quickly evaluated, um, that, the, that if there is a cognitive impairment, it is detected, there's a proper diagnosis, and the patient is linked to the right treatment. And then patients and families are given a care team navigator or other guide to navigate them um, and personalize care to their needs and prioritizes their quality of life. So in closing, um, these treatments and care practices that I talked about and, and what you'll hear about from Lee Jennings, they won't prevent or cure Alzheimer's disease or other dementias, but they will help to change the experience of people with the conditions and their family caregivers, helping them to manage and cope with the difficult situations caused by the conditions and live as well as possible despite them. I wanna thank uh, my collaborators. Most of my key collaborators are up here on this slide at UCSF and some of our collaborating sites as we try to scale this out nationwide. And thank you to uh, the UCSF Memory and Aging Center, and a huge thank you to the organizers here for this wonderful meeting. I look forward to your questions.